Hey guys, I'm Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm Chris Irvin. And we're here to talk to you about the differences between a water fast and a fat fast. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people know what fasting is, but I don't know that everybody kind of knows the difference between the different types of fasting and especially this kind of unique method called fat fasting. Right. There's another thing called intermittent fasting, there's dry fasting, all that stuff. We're going to forget all about that and just look into water fast versus a fat fast. So water fast very easily is just consuming water. So I think that you can have some tweaks here. You have a little bit of variance. So if you have coffee or tea or electrolytes or whatever, bone broth, pretty much anything that's just a clear liquid with zero calories, as we can say, is a water fast. So there's a lot of argument with lies in that water fast as a technicality, but the main goal there is just to have no calories, no fat, nothing coming in, maybe just a little bit of electrolytes. Yeah, and then the difference between that and fat fasting is just kind of just like it sounds, fat fasting is just you're consuming fat during that fasting window. There's also several different ways you can do this that we'll talk about, um, but you know the difference there is that you are gonna be consuming something of caloric value and fat. So, you know, there's going to be clear differences in the benefits and the strategic uses of these different types. Right. So a lot of people ask me, should I fast? Does this break a fast? Is this fasting or not? So it depends. With all stuff fasting, it really depends why you're doing it, what type of fast are you doing? You know, there's so many different areas here we need to look at. So generally speaking, a water fast, the promotion of health here is through autophagy or breaking down old cells to clean cells out and also restarting a lot of different hormonal pathways. And so, for instance, just like working out, I go to the gym, I exercise, what happens is I break down muscle tissue and my body goes, uh-oh, <laughs> probably shouldn't let that happen again. And so it starts building that up better and better and better. And so what happens is from old damaged cells in your body, you start creating inflammatory cytokines, which are basically just signals to your body that those are old and dying cells. When you start fasting, your body needs to kind of go through and clean up all the mess to start using different parts of cells to repair other cells because you're not having food come in, which is usually where the source of that is. And so you start breaking up stuff and a lot of stuff that's broken up is the old malfunctioning cells. Then what happens after you start eating again, say after three, five, seven days, well, then you start building stuff up back like new, just like when you were working out. Um, so you break down your body temporarily as a stress to build it back up. Now, we don't really know exactly how to measure autophagy or when this kicks in. So this is where people think like, okay, I'm fasting for this cellular health benefit, for this longevity benefit, so I can clear out cancer cells with autophagy. But you need to do fasting, water fasting, for probably about you know, three, four, five days to get that benefit, up to maybe seven to 10 days. So that, for a lot of people, is somewhat limiting. And so that's a, kind of the, the main things of a water fast versus a fat fast. Yeah, and you know, the fact that a, an extended water fast can be challenging for a lot of people is kind of the reason why I think a fat fast has been becoming more popular. I think that for some people, having some sort of substance during their fasting window can allow them to extend that fast a little bit longer. Now, the problem is obviously is that we don't want to be doing anything that's gonna be stimulating insulin. So, you know, a lot of people talk about consuming protein during the fasting window or, you know, any, any sort of protein or carbohydrates, probably not the best idea, but it's possible that fat in the right amounts might not stimulate an insulin response and could potentially be incorporated into fasting. Now, based off of everything that you just heard, we, we can't really you know, tell if there's gonna be a clear difference in things like autophagy since we can't measure it. So we can't really know is there a difference between having fat during your fasting window or not having it. Um, but we could probably speculate that if your primary goal is this autophagy and that's something that's very, you're taking that very seriously, then a water fast is probably the best approach. But if you're trying to get all these other benefits that can accompany fasting, like you know weight loss, getting into a deeper state of ketosis, increasing your, your mental, uh, mental output, things like that, then a fat fast might actually even be a better idea for you. Yeah, the, really the main benefit of a fat fast, for people, they don't really need to care so much about this autophagy and clearing out cells. They need to make sure that they're not so insulin resistant. So when people start being bombarded by carbohydrates over and over and over again, it's not good. You know, mm -hmm. It leads to a lot of problems in health. So a lot of chronic disease states, insulin resistance is kind of this first step that you need to take before you develop neurodegenerative disease, before you develop cancer, before you develop a lot of these things, heart disease, all this stuff. So limiting that and starting to reverse that, a fat fast can be really, really beneficial because you're just 
completely wiping out insulin response, like you said. Yeah, and you know that's and the important thing to point out with that is that you know just consuming massive amounts of fat isn't going to allow you to experience that same benefit. You know, high amounts of fat can potentially get you, give you a, a, an insulin response that could be counterintuitive to what you're trying to achieve. So, you know, there's really, if you're doing this fat fasting, we have specific recommendations for that. And, you know, really MCTs is what we would say is probably the best fat to be consuming during that time. You know, one of the benefits of fasting is that it can increase ketone production. That's why the ketogenic diet was made. They're, they're very similar to each other. So, you know, this, if we know that MCTs can further stimulate ketone production, then you know all the benefits of ketosis that can come with fasting could be more robust with fat fasting. Right. And so I think the big takeaway here is that with a water fast, you're gonna get all the benefits of a fat fast. It just might not be as easy to stick to over the long period of time because you're not getting any calories in. Especially if you haven't been doing a lot of fasting, you're probably gonna be a lot hungrier, a little hangrier. And with a fat fast, you're gonna be doing a lot of metabolic work. So if you, I mean, if you test your blood glucose, it's pretty high. If you're still having energy swings, even though you're keto adapted, you might want to work on your metabolism long term. That's why a fat fast might be better. It's easier to comply with, but you, you might be getting all of the benefits you'd be getting with a water only fast. Yeah, and I think some other times where fat fast could be really beneficial is for somebody who has some sort of increased energy demand during their fasting window. So if you're somebody who, you know, you're fasting in the morning and you have work to do during that time or you want to work out during that time having a little bit of fat in your, in your diet during that time might be beneficial for kind of getting the most out of your mental performance and your physical performance. Right, but I think a caveat here is that you're not gonna be burning a lot of fat if you're consuming a lot of fat. And so sure. people think that you know, they have their bulletproof coffee and that's jacking up the, their fat burning capabilities. It's, it's not true, it actually takes hours and hours and hours to metabolize and oxidize the fat that you consume dietarily before you start tapping into your own body fat. And so that is coming mostly from fasting, not you know, fat fasting. Yeah, and that's why, so if you are gonna follow this fat fasting, not only is the type of fat that you're choosing important, but also the amount. So you really wanna make sure that if you're doing fat fasting, you're keeping your calories low. I like to try to keep them definitely below 100, typically below 80 if I can. So, you know, that's just half, half to a full serving of MCTs uh, is a great thing to use during that time. And, and another thing, another reason why fat fasting could possibly be beneficial is that for some people, you know, a lot of you guys out there who are fasting, you're also chronically calorie restricting. Mm -hmm. And maybe you, you really like the benefits of fasting, but you're starting to experience some negatives to how long you've been restricting yourself of, of calories. So, you know, fat fasting could be an easy way for you to increase your calorie consumption while still getting a lot of those benefits that you're going for from fasting. Right, but just remember that fasting, either if it's a fat fast or a water fast, both of them are stresses to your body, just like working out really hard is. And so, you already have a lot of stuff to, to adapt to. I think that this is, this is a tool, but it's not something that you need to be doing all the time, maybe contrary to what the internet says. Yeah, so if you're following a ketogenic diet, it doesn't mean that you have to be incorporating fasting. It can be a great tool to help get different results and maybe help get more robust results in certain areas. Um, but if you're new to the ketogenic diet, probably let yourself get a little bit more adapted before you start considering a lot of these fasting measures. So we're gonna be building out a lot of content around this and videos and you know, what breaks a fast, how to do different types of fasts, and all the information that you could, you could um, ever want. So if you have any questions about anything regarding fasting, pop it below and we'll make sure to address those. Any personal questions, just DM us at Instagram, Gustin for me. And The Ketologist. Right, we'll see you guys next time.